Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're taking a look at the Microtech UTX-70. This is Microtech's smallest out the front auto, and uh, well, not blade length wise, but overall size wise, it's their smallest I believe. It's 70% of their Ultratech line, and it's a really, really cool little, I hesitate to call it a gentleman's out the front knife, but a, a kind of dressy out the front knife. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll do some size comparisons, talk about, talk about what I like, what I'm neutral towards, what I dislike, and then go over a conclusion on this tiny little out the front automatic. All right, on to some size comparisons here. We'll go ahead and actuate the blades so you can see all that. And it's gonna sit at kind of a weird angle because of the clip, but that's the best we can do. First up, a uh, special edition <laughs> Victorinox Classic. Um, again, very, very small knife. The Victorinox Classic is super, super tiny. And there it is next to the UTX-70. Uh, this particular version is the Birdshot IV uh, Victorinox. So if you wanted one, I hope you got one. If not, I think they're doing another drop. I should give them a shout out. Next up, we have the Spyderco McB, which is another super tiny knife. Wider and shorter. <laughs> um, but another kind of like high-end small piece. Spyderco, a little native here. Only slightly longer. Um, obviously less cutting edge because of the finger choil and things like that. Um, ironically enough, longer handle, but a shorter blade. Um, this is a blade, the blade to handle ratio on these UTX-70s is fantastic. And that's the case for a lot of Microtechs. Next up, we have the Benchmade Bugout. So, a little bit longer. Um, it's actually a little bit thicker than the Microtech UTX-70 as well. Um, the UTX-70 is a super, super thin knife. You can see this is just a bit chunkier. And last comparison here, grab the uh, Spyderco Smock. Much, much longer knife, um, immediately noticeable. But e even this isn't a huge knife, so it's, it's, it's really telling for how small this piece is. All right, let's go ahead and move on to what I like about it. All right, first up is gonna be the size. Um, that's what really compelled me to get this. It's a very small, very lightweight, very compact out the front automatic. And it was my first out the front automatic. Um, this one will be going on because I'm getting a, I want a different blade shape uh, down the line or a different color, one of the two, maybe both. Um, but this is an excellent, excellent knife. Um, even though I want a different style, I find myself very, very hesitant to part with it. Um, partially because of the size, it's just, it's perfect for, um, just small everyday tasks when you want to have something a little bit more flashy. Um, some Microtechs are touted as like combat knives. This is not a combat knife. Don't do not do that with this tiny little thing. Don't do that with any knife, but especially not this little bitty one here. Um, but the size is perfect. Uh, it's super, super thin. It's, it's still really good ergonomically. I can still get a really good three finger grip on it. The fourth finger just kind of goes away. Um, it, it catches a little bit on that glass breaker on the end, but that's about it. Um, if you could probably do a four finger grip, or at least I probably could, if it wasn't a dagger blade, which is part of the reason I'm selling this one. I'm just so I can get a different blade shape, but, uh, ergonomics are good. Size is pretty good. It's a little contoured. You can see there just to help with the grip, uh, a little bit of an indent here, slightly larger indent here. And the thumb rack is also uh, a newer kind of texturing from Microtech. I'll bring it up here so you can see it. It catches your finger really, really well, actually. Um, I really, it's it's a pleasure to actuate this because of that button texturing. It's, it's great. It's not too sharp, but it's sharp enough to catch your thumb. It's fantastic. Uh, speaking of the blade, this is the Dagger Grind. And it's not, it's really, really good for piercing. It's amazing for piercing. And it's pretty thin blade sock, so it slices okay. But the grind is so shallow on each side that it's not the best slicer in the world by any means whatsoever, especially for uh, stock this thin. So just keep that in mind when you're picking one up. And um, it does have these cool little holes in it, which you can kind of see there if I can. They're a bit hard to see, but they're right there in the middle. And um, that would potentially worry me on a larger knife just for you know structural purposes, but this is so small, it's completely irrelevant, honestly. Uh, Steel is two, uh, CTS 204P. They have also done these in LMAX and M390. It really just depends on uh, which version you get. This is a 
newer one. Um, this is from May of this year, I believe. So yeah, uh, they, they change the steels up every now and then. Uh, CTS 204P is an American carpenter steel, which is probably why they're moving on to that. It's just a choice. It's still a fantastic steel, and I've had no issues with this one at all. Granted, I haven't really used it all that much because of the size. Um, it's more of a light use kind of letter opener thing for me or opening boxes or something. I'm not breaking down cardboard or cutting rope or anything with this, so keep that in mind. Um, I also really like the design. It's very distinctive. You really you can tell it's a Microtech almost immediately um, between the logo and the um, the screw layout, just the general overall shape. You know, there's a lot of OTFs out there. A lot of them are not directly copying Microtech, but somewhat similar. But a Microtech has a very distinctive uh, style about it, you know. And they, they've pretty much kept with that on, on the uh, Ultratech UTX-85 and UTX-70 lines. So it's it's just, it's, it's a nice uh, kind of eye-catching thing. The clip works really, really well. It's not very pretty, but it's super, super functional. And very little of that knife is going to stick out of your pocket. I kind of wish they would get rid of the glass breaker, but it's not a huge deal. Um, but yeah, clips are good. Ergo is good. Size is good. Blade's pretty good. Let's go ahead and move on to one of the more neutral towards. All right, so first thing up, um, the logo, it doesn't bother me a lot, but it's there and you can't really do much about it. I almost wish they would offer a version without the logo. Just my personal preference. Um, I think it would look a lot cleaner, although maybe a little more boring. I'm not sure. Hmm. But yeah, logo is kind of there. It's just their thing. Um, the glass breaker, I don't know why it's on such a small knife. It is a, a pretty sturdy looking glass breaker, and I believe it's a carbide instead of a hardened steel, so it might actually break glass pretty well. But it's silly on this little tiny knife um, because it barely sticks out past my hand. Just personal preference. I, I don't need a glass breaker on a uh, this small of an OTF, you know. Um, there's a little bit of a button wiggle. It's not huge, but you might be able to kind of you can kind of see it if you look up here. Kind of wiggling back and forth. Not a huge deal, but it's there, and it's not present on um, my other OTF or any of the other OTFs that I've tried. So it's not it's not great. Otherwise, fit and finish is really really good. Um, but for that, I had to knock them just a little bit. Next thing, unless it's a Hawk Deadlock, there's going to be a little bit of blade play on all automatics. This one's pretty good. There's not very much, but it is there. You're going to get a little bit of uh, vertical and horizontal wiggle, so keep that in mind um, when you're looking at these. Next up, the, the blade grind. As I mentioned, it's not very good for slicing. It's also super, super impractical for this tiny knife. Um, it does look kind of cool, honestly. It makes it look... Uh, this is going to sound silly. It makes it look really, really... Uh, mean but it's it's so diminutive it really can't be but I'm, I don't really need a mean looking knife so it's it's not you know necessarily for me last up the price price isn't great on this it's 220 I really think this is more of a 170 to 190 ish range knife um, it feels extremely extremely well made it's very premium feeling um, materials are pretty good the price just seems a little high, um, but I can't really pinpoint why. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just uh, maybe it's just me. But yeah, the price seems a little high to me. I wish they would drop it just a bit, just a little bit of a uh, small complaint there. Let's go ahead and move on to what I dislike about this knife. All right, on the uh, dislike side, warranty is voided by disassembly. Um. With OTFs, I'm not as picky about getting into the knives, but if something goes wrong, I'd really like to be able to open it up and at least set the blade back on track or something like that. Uh, that'll probably never, you know, never mess up, but it's kind of annoying to have to send it back to Microtech just to warranty it, just because, just because they won't let me open it. And uh, part of that is also these proprietary screws, which you can see here. They have a few different kinds. This is one of them. And you can see... Sorry about that. You can see there's there aren't really any bits out there that'll fit this unless you get Microdex proprietary um, bit driver. And I don't know if they make one for the UTX-70. I haven't seen them. I'm sure you could find one or make one, but I haven't found one yet. 
So the fact that they're charging this much for a knife that I can't open and it has weird screws really rubs me the wrong way. All right, on to the conclusion. So say that you have waited a year or so <laughs> for a batch of these to drop and you finally got one in hand. Was it worth it? In my opinion, yes. I, I waited a long time for this knife and I absolutely love it. I love it to death. Um, apart from the blade shape, really, I don't really have any gripes, and I wouldn't be selling it otherwise. The screws bother me, but not that much. And in my opinion, this is an excellent, excellent little out-the-front automatic. And um, if you're looking at one, and you want something tiny, and you really understand how small this knife really is, um, it, it'll be perfect for you. Just get a blade shape you want, get the color you want, um, weight if need be, but... I, I love it. It's it's awesome. It's a fantastic little knife. And even though it's going, it's still one of my favorites in my collection. If you have any questions or anything like that, just let me down, down in the comments. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Bye.